This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your host, Rob and Ashley. Hi, welcome to Life Rewired. I'm Rob, and joining me today is Jason Lolly again. Ashley will be back very soon. Uh, we're going to have a deep, deep, deep conversation today. And um, I'm going to read a question that was posed to us. And it says, anyone else deal with what I like to refer to as the perfect storm? How do you find balance in the areas where they feed each other? Like being caught in the storm leads me to frequent unaliving ideations and escalate from there. And when you think things have let up a little and you think you finally caught a break, something triggers you and the storms start brewing and you dig yourself into yet another hole. And you have to fight the, your way out of trying to maintain full-time employment and family obligations. When does this madness end? And Steve, if you're watching, comment and we'll uh, go from there. But Jason and I are going to try to answer what we think the question goes around. There's a lot of different areas we can go through here, right, Jason? Yeah, I mean, we, we just kind of went through this and talked about it. And, you know, I went we were talking about kind of like what we were what we were interpreting and how we were understanding this question and i think the bigger part is is this perfect storm that that steve's talking about and you know that you come down to that very bottom part of what he says is it says that you know when you finally caught a break and something triggers you and the storms start brewing and you dig yourself in yet another hole so i'm almost seeing like a perfect storm could be several things uh, a perfect storm could be a situation where we're getting too much input, we're getting too much environmental stimuli that's creating um, different uh, interpretations, not interpretations, but reactions and responses um, to our impairments, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, because we have a processing information. Period. Right. So it's like if we, if I'm in an environment, like as a performer, sometimes I'll walk into an environment where you know it's it's got a lot of people so i'm dealing with a lot of people or i'm dealing with the lights as well and the overlapping yeah. sounds of people so i'm dealing with the proximity of people mm -hmm. right because i get a lot of anxiety because my spatial awareness from my brain injury was off yep so if my spatial awareness is and i don't know where you all are really then i'm i'm uneasy and i'm uncomfortable right so that creates a sense of anxiety within me um, you know, the overlapping sounds that's, that's, that's coming at me, right. The overlight, the, the lights, they're attacking me. And so, you know, um, and then trying to engage in a singular conversation at the same time. And that's how I kind of see a perfect storm, yeah. you know, as this is really starting to come to me. And so mm -hmm. like, that's, that's being in this one situation where everything lines up. And now we're just sitting there. We're like the deer in the headlights. And how do we respond? Oh and yeah. That's where I that's where I hear like something triggers you, right? Yeah. And then the storm starts brewing. And then you dig yourself into another hole. How do I dig myself into another hole from that? Is I don't show up with intention or I haven't been able to heal myself in ways that I've healed myself. Like if I were to go back to the early part of brain injury, Jason or Lolly, then I would have exploded. I would have raged. I would have shut down. I would have caused some sort of problem because I'm having problems. Right. Um, and so, and then, yeah. you know, and then there's that other aspect, you know, is, yeah, I, and that in that ad, before I get into another aspect, but like that is a perfect storm for me. And I don't know about you, Rob. Have you been in that situation like that many times? Yeah, there, there when there's too many things going on, I shut down. I really do. Uh, we went yesterday to uh, my dad has to have a reverse. I've never heard of this before, but it's called a reverse shoulder replacement, and. We're in the doctor's office. Hmm. There's the doctor, my my wife, and my dad, and myself. And I'm trying to focus on what the doctor's saying, as well as hearing the clock on the wall go tick, tick, ah. tick, tick. Yeah, I'm the only one that this is bothering. 
And I said something to the lady. I said, does that get on your nerves? And she goes, does what get on my nerves? The ticking of the clock. I've never even noticed it. <laughs> she goes, you can hear that? Said, yeah, I can hear that. But I, yeah, you don't understand. I've already got all these we sounds that I'm listening to in the background. Someone trying to talk to me. So now you got two things on your plate. People walking by, you, uh, all these distractions. And the, the what's those lights? Tick. The fluorescent lights. Tick. Tick. Yeah. Tick. All going on so in the background. So then it's just all like Jason. Or, yeah. So like Steve said, it's the perfect storm. It's brewing. And now you have to answer it's questions. And you're like, uh, how do you answer questions when you're in that in that moment? And I, and I think that's an important question is, you know, when we're in those moments as a brain injury survivor and we're dealing with impulse control, we're dealing with a loss of filter, we're dealing with the inability to process, we're, we're having trouble thinking about what we need and what we want and being able to even process this entire situation. All of this is just coming at us, right? And we don't necessarily know how to react. Yes. Well, so I, I, I'm very specific in, in using the word react and the word response. When I use the word react, I mean that we just basically react. There's no real thought to that. It's yeah. just, it, it's, it's initial, you know, it happens. A response is something that we decide, we take time, we process, we think before we do it and we say it. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think that the hard part is how do we manage ourselves, the self-regulation, the self-management in that moment when we're actually being attacked. And um, I, it really comes down to the different levels of brain injury because you know not all of us have the ability to be present yet to be able to actually understand that all those yeah. things are hitting us at once. We, we might not have been able to identify that those are actually all of those things are issues for us, right? Um, like, as you're talking about right. being at that doctor's office, like, I wish they would have heard that. Like, that's an important thing you just shared. I know it's small, the tick, 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 tick. But what you really communicated and what doctors really, you know, like their job is supposed to read between the lines. They're supposed to catch these little things that we say Mm -hmm. and that, you know, the tick, tick, tick was demonstrating that small sounds and noises, you know, are, are overstimulating for you. They're, you're sensitive to them. You're, you're like, if it's not, oh no, I don't ever hear it. You're sensitive to that. Right. And so, and it's taking you out of it. So, you know, how do we manage that? You know, and that's the hardest part. That's a very hard question to answer because the answer depends on the different levels of healing and recovery of, of the brain injury, the the brain injury survivor, right. And what their actual abilities are. As I always talk about, as as I talk about brain injury, that's one of the things that I want to always be cognizant and aware of is that not everyone has the ability in most of us don't have the ability to communicate the things we need to communicate, you know? And so like in my, in my old mental health, like bullying prevention days, I would have been like, yeah, just let's be aware and let's communicate and, you know, and then we can work on that, but that's just not how it works for brain injury survivors, you know? So in that instance, Mm -hmm. it's like, um, what I could maybe suggest in that is if we don't have the ability to be present in the moment and catch it to communicate, to say, Hey, certain things are bothering us because that is always a good, good tool and a good, good approach. If we have that ability, right? If we don't, hopefully we have the ability that when we go home and we're replaying it, cause we're still upset and we're still depleted that we can, you know, begin to process it just a little bit slower, have compassion with ourselves that it's taking us a longer time to understand the situation, but then really be like, okay, like these are the things that I've learned that, that are affecting me and, and, and those kind of things. Like what, what was it like asking ourselves, what was it that made it so bad? It boils back down to, we're still trying to live the old life. 
You know, you mm. wake up, you feel decent. And then you go, you know, I can, I can really do this. And I have a, I have an example that I can weave into this. We it, getting back to my dad and his shoulder surgery the doctor drilled it in his head yesterday. He said, it's not going to fix, give you all your strength back. Okay. He's a, he's a eight zero years old now. You know, if he was, you know, eight, nine years ago, he would have done the other surgery, but he'll, he'll get strength back, but it won't be what he had. But he said, it's right. going to eliminate the pain. He says, now when you get home from the surgery, he said for the first two or three months, he has to keep it in a sling or not use it. I mean, I'll, the only weight he can, he can, do with it is just moving his hand after I think two months, he can put like a pound. He goes, now you're going to get home and you're going to start feeling great. You're going to go, wow, no pain. I can, I can go gung ho. He says, no, no, no. He says, cause if you do that, he says, you're going to do more damage. There's going to be a stress fracture. And once that fracture's there, guess what? Nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. So I think we are doing the same thing. We're living our old lives and we forget that some days that when we feel pretty good, we still got to take it slow, still got to give ourselves grace and we still have to get lots of rest. Yeah. You know what I really hear? And I think you might have nailed that um, a little bit of what Steve's trying to ask us is that, you know, when you talk about the ideations, okay. I'm going to refer to the unalived as ideations. Okay. So yeah. the ideations is, um, you know, why, why would he all of a sudden have ideations during a perfect storm? Because it's so overwhelming and we want our old life back. Mm -hmm. and, right. And, and it, there's, there's that constant comparison and it's like, this is no quality of life at all. Right. And and we all know the thoughts that go through our head in those, but as I say that, I would like to remind everybody, I do have 17 and a half hours of this type of training. And so I would like to remind you that most of the time it is just a really, really dark moment. And I, uh, let me take away the word just most of the time it is a really, really dark moment and it will pass just like everything else. And so really in most of the training that I've ever received, it's to provide a safe space to listen, let that person talk that, talk it through, talk it out. And generally when they do that and they have somebody that's validating them and listening them, then they don't feel so hopeless and so helpless and so alone that they feel that that needs to be the next course of action. And they can start to come back a little bit more to what reality is. You know, that, that, you know, cause a lot of the times when that's so dark, those emotions are so intense. And I think for us as brain injury survivors, because we deal with such an increase of intensity of emotions, that that is also, um, puts us at a higher risk. And so, you know, um, yeah, yeah, that, that constant comparison to the old me, you know, and. I, I think you've probably heard me speak on that. And one day I will do a video just on that is um, grieving the death of the old us, right? Like I literally yeah. attended my own funeral in my head. I used my mind space and I went and I said goodbye to that human being, that spirit. And I said, you know, and I, and I said all the things that I wanted to say to him. Really? You know, thank you. Thank you for the life that we had and we provided, you know, thank you for, for the way you showed up in this world. And, you know, and I, and I miss you, buddy, but I had to let go because if I didn't let go, if I didn't grieve that he was gone, then I would constantly keep looking for him. You know, it's like a pet. Oh yeah. You have a pet, right? If you don't grieve that the pet's gone, yeah. like you might actually <laughs> walk around the house looking for it. Like, and, and the, the one of the, why, why don't we grieve that, that the, this, this change in us, 
one, many of us might not even be able to identify that. And we might not be able to accept it. And um, we might, hold on real quick. Henry, leave it. Get down. Good boy. I was about to have a a barking fit. Um, Lost my train of thought. Dog took me out of it. Uh, Oh, uh, if we don't, you know, if we don't. Uh, Grieving it. Yeah, if you don't grieve, the grieve the the pet, right? Because we're in denial. We can't accept, you know, and some some of us can't even identify that we've become a different person, you know, um, as, as I'm stepping yeah. into this life coaching, consulting stuff, <laughs> incredible. I already have six clients and I was speaking with one of a, a new potential client coming on and they were talking about how their, um, the, uh, their daughter, uh, and boyfriend got in a bad accident and a couple weeks ago and the boyfriend is acting so different. Like you uh-huh. treat her like gold, etc. But, um, it's been two weeks and he doesn't understand how much different he is. Right. Yeah. He doesn't, he, he doesn't see that he's being a different We person. don't see it. No. And, and even if people are like, Hey, you're a different person. Mm-hmm. We, we don't really necessarily can recognize that. Right. Right. Like it, 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 I mean, it took me, it took me therapies. It took doctors being like, Hey, this is the test that shows you had this that helped me really grasp and, and accept like I have brain damage, right? Yeah. Brain injury equals brain damage. Can we just acknowledge that for a second? (laughs) Like, you know, like, I I don't think like when people think of concussion, I think it's hard for people to make that connection connection. Yeah. You know, when we talk about concussions, how can we dismiss it like we do in the society? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, how do we dismiss it in those ways? Like, and and like when people talk, oh, like I have brain injury. They're like, okay. Like, like, no, like I have brain damage. Okay. If I got a brain injury, then there was part of my neural pathways that got damaged, which means that a part of me got changed. And I got, I, you know, like it's. Yes. I digress, <laughs> but you know, back, back to the whole grieving part and really, really, you know, I, I think that's an important part of the conversation and it's the acceptance, you know, we're in denial of who we are yeah. We're in denial of, of our symptoms. We're fighting our symptoms, right? I've done a video on, we cannot heal mm-hmm. when we're in resistance. And so when these symptoms come in, what do we do? Do we give in to them or do we fight them with tooth and nail? That's an, I like, like, yeah. I like, if, like when you were fighting in, for say uh, your spouse, I, I'm sorry to be cut you off. <laughs> this no, no, is, I was, I was asking, you a, I was asking um, you a question is, <laughs> is when your symptoms come in, do you fight it? I'm just, I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's probably a yes. I, I, yeah. I think that most of us probably, you know, when our symptoms hit us, we're not like, oh, you know, I'm just having emotional irregulation again, you know, and, and accept that I'm having emotional irregulation again and, and that I need to manage that. Like, right? Like when it hits you, do, yeah. do you, are you like... I'm having emotional regulation again. You know, like you get upset with yourself. We don't have compassion. We're <laughs> fighting with ourselves that we're even experiencing these lights. I'm telling you, you know, and that's why we, uh, do you see it? Do you see the yeah. rage showing up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we We will fight to the death for someone we love. But when it comes to fighting for ourselves, why do we give up? You know, that brings it up an interesting conversation. Um, I, I think we've talked about that. I wrote a book on bullying prevention, right? Have I ever mentioned that? Yeah. Uh, 
Okay. So, yeah. uh, one of the, one of the topics that came up as I started doing all of that was self bullying. Uh, which is a huge thing because now I can look at anyone in the world and say, who's the number one bully in your life? And everyone's going to say, because of how we speak to ourselves and we rationalize and we excuse that we can speak to ourselves in those ways because it's us. No, treat yourself yeah. like someone you loved. Why is it that we can sit here and love people so greatly, but we cannot love ourselves. We are the, our relationships come and go. And yet we're pouring more of ourselves into them than we are into ourselves. These relationships, they come and they go. There's one constant. Yeah. It's us. The one yeah. constant in our yeah. relation, the one relationship that never changes is the one that we have. We don't go anywhere. And so why do we not, see that as the most important relationship that we will ever build in our life. How is it that we can't love ourselves? You know, the whole world struggles with this. And, you know, for whatever reason, this, this childhood mm -hmm. trauma thing really is a big part of this, right? Where, where, where right. we started to question who we were. We, you know, we started, we, the traumas and the things that people told us that weren't necessarily true, we started to believe, you know, and then that's where I hear in Steve's thing is we hear this, something triggers us. When I, I hear the word trigger, I always hear trauma and we talk about this perfect storm. Well, brain injury and trauma are the perfect storm because we don't know both of them are happening. Yeah, they're both subconscious and they mm -hmm. both come and hit us at the blind side. And it's like some dude punching two dudes punching us from both sides and it just smashes us. Right. Like, you know, it's it's subconscious. Uh -huh. And and trauma gets unlocked from brain injury. Right. And, and how do I know that? Because it happened to me. I thought I had processed all of my trauma, but it was really compartmentalized in boxes on shelves. But the brain injury was the um, it knocked them all off the shelves. They all my traumas fell out and I never knew it. And they started bonding with me mm -hmm. seamlessly, like a like a chemical bond that I never knew. And now I'm starting to show up in trauma triggers, trauma reactions. I don't call those trauma oh, responses yeah. that much anymore because a trauma, it's a trauma reaction. We're experiencing a situation that reminded yeah. us of a trauma.